What's up, CFO gang? It's your boy, Jay Tuck. Real Cowboys fans stand up. And before we talk about what I really want to discuss today, you know, I'll say this, man. I've been doing a lot of self-reflecting. I've um, been doing a lot of personal journaling, like handwriting in actual journal. And I think it's always good to kind of self-reflect, especially at the end of the day. We live a lot of busy lives and different things going on. But do we really sit back and analyze? And I feel like journaling has really kind of helped me get to peace with a lot of different things, right? So, you know, what am I getting at? So yesterday, once again, there was a little riff, right? You know, Derek Eagleton reached out to me on Twitter, had a comment. Um, then you had Zach Woolcheck, and then you had also uh, Clarence Hill. It's just like, all right, I had to finally sit down like, yo, Tuck, why does this continue to happen? Because you don't typically at people, right? Because I never see like a Clarence Hill posting like Clarence, you're wrong, blah, 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 blah. You know what I'm saying? Like, I really don't do that. Like majority of the time right now, just trying to keep the peace in the community. Like I'll just like retweet Mike Fisher and be like, yo, fire article or Clarence Hill, you're the goat. You know what I'm saying? I just do stuff like that. Just kind of keep the peace because once again, I have no problems with these people. I've met Clarence before. Clarence is a cool cat. You know what I'm saying? If you haven't met Clarence, hella cool cat, man. Um, and some of these people are hella cool. So I have no problems, no beef with Brian Broaddus or anybody like that, right? But I feel like there's always this kind of this riff thing, right? The old media versus the new media thing, right? So for me personally, I'm trying to find solutions. And to be honest with you, I never bring confrontation forward. Like even with my boxing training, like that's what we're working on right now. Like my trainers like wanted me to press the fight. I'm more of a counter punter, man. I, I counter, I, I slip, you know what I'm saying? Like I'm a counter kind of guy, right? And even in life now a counter, you miss swing. All right. And that's when I give you the six, five, three, you know what I'm saying? But even in life, I really don't bring a lot of drama at you, but if you respond, I'll slip and counter, right? So. What am I getting at yesterday? Of course, the hot topic button was the Micah, to uh, Micah Parsons situation. Not showing up for Cam, but kind of voiced a few things that we did on the show last night with Knicks. Like, hey, there's been numerous players that's missed Cam. You know, it just is what it is. Why is it such a big story? They commented back. I pushed back. Okay, well, do you have any links? Of course, they didn't have any links or whatever because I knew they didn't have any links. All right, cool. But I had to ask myself, like, what is the disconnect, Tuck? Like, what, what are you missing? Don't ask what they are missing, right? Ask of yourself, what are you missing? And what I realized, and I kind of got this from Derek Eagleton's tweet, they do not focus on us, right? They don't focus on the diehard and death Cowboys fans, right? And I think that's where I personally am making the biggest mistake and where I need to apologize because their main goal is they write editorials for major, you know, newspapers and major networks, right? They want the big names. They want the deck the CD, Micah Parsons digs, right? So Micah Parsons misses OTAs. He is selfish. It's a much bigger engaging title than Marquise Bell moved back to safety. How does he feel about the position? Like, so majority of the casual fans, the easy digestible fans, they want this, right? You guys want this, okay? So I think that's where the new media and the old media are bumping heads and where I'm making my biggest mistake. Like I said, once again, I apologize because I'm having new media expectations on old media and they have different expectations. They're going to give you the above the surface content, just like First Take, just like Undisputed, just like all these other shows, Dak, CD, Micah, Diggs. That's kind of their level, right? You're not going to go to Clarence. And I would say Clarence because Clarence, Clarence is cool, right? You're not going to go to Clarence for a film breakdown on Wanye Thomas. You're not going to go to Jane Slater for to understand, you know, Zim's scheme and his philosophy of a cover three and cover two. Like, you're not going to go to some of these people for these conversations, right? So I think that's where the disconnect, right? You're not going to listen to 105 through the fan to understand about the no ID offense, right? Of Kellen Moore's play calling or the Texas Coast offense to get a clear breakdown of these undrafted guys. When it comes to that, you have to come to what I call the surgeons. You have to come to Okoye if you want your draft content and your film breakdowns. You have to come to Vach. You have to come to Foots. You have to come to Sky. You have to come to DMV. You have to come to JC. You have to come to me. Like to get the real under the surface stuff and the content in the full 52 roster, you got to come to us, right? You're not going to get that from them. So from my standpoint, it's like, 
Why are you huddled around Micah Parsons asking about OTAs, voluntary OTAs at that, when he missed last year? Like, what's what what's the pressing need? What's the pressing urgency with that? But they just saw Micah and they just want something from Micah. Versus if I was in that room, what would you guys prefer? If I would have went over to Mozzie Smith's locker, photographs, you know, saying, Mozzie, how's your offseason training? Like, have you put on size? What really happened last year? Like, and get that on camera. You guys would have wanted that content, right? So I think that's where the disconnect is. And I really have to allow that. They're kind of like doctors, right? You go to the doctors and say, yo, my chest is hurting, right? They're going to give you some medicine, tell you take some rest or different. But if you really want a true diagnosis, a CAT scan, an EKG, right? You're going to have to come to a cardiologist. And I feel like the new media space, a lot of us are more like cardiologists where we can just go death and ask those additional layers of questions. So I'm all about growing. So for that old media, I will apologize, 105, everybody, because I need to stop putting my expectations of what a journalist should be on y'all because that's really not your market. You're to talk to the casual Cowboys fan who just says, we them boys, give them Micah throws or Micah, you know what I'm saying, sacks and Dak throws and Trey Lance, that and all that stuff up there. And then we'll do the more in depth stuff over here, man. So it's a partnership, right? So where I want to get over today, man, I was having this conversation. Like I said, I was doing a lot of journaling last night, man. And I'm starting to recognize something in our community. And once again, one of those ideas kind of just popped up in my head, right? And I go back to 2016, right? We had Dak Prescott. Now, Dak Prescott was kind of an unknown, unless you're really a college football head, like some of us are on this channel in this community, right? So I personally knew about Dak Prescott and wanted the Cowboys to draft him, but not a lot of people did, right? So he comes in, fourth round pick, kind of just floating around, wasn't a lot of hyper buzz around him, right? But Romo goes down, Kellen goes down, we know the story, you know, went on an incredible run, him and Zeke, 214, everything was good, everything was glowing. So then what happened? Did anything really happen? Nothing. That Dak didn't do anything wrong, right? But what happened was, reminds me of another show that's an incredible show, now it kind of fell off, right? But it's an incredible show, is The Walking Dead. For those of you who do not know, right, The Walking Dead is a zombie show, right? The zombie apocalypse kind of going on, and there's different people just trying to survive, okay? So why does the situation with Dak remind me of The Walking Dead? Well, I'm glad you asked, right? All it took, Dak, you know what I'm saying, rookie of the year, you know, we we're flying high, won the division, won the best records in the NFC. You know, we should have beat Green Bay and went on to an NFC championship game. But, you know, you know, gave up a third and 20 to Aaron Rodgers and we didn't get Jeff Heath to get the strip fumble right. So things kind of changed, right? But all it took was one toxic zombie that was poisoned, rooted, whether that was with hate, whether that was with racism, whether that was with Romo fandom or malicious intent. To say, you know what? I don't like Dak Prescott. No reason why, no contextual reason why to bite another fan. And they bit another fan, right? This Cowboys fan over here, yeah, Dak, we got the future quarterback. We're going to be good. 2 1 4. And then they got bit. You know what? I don't like Dak neither. I don't know why. I just don't like. He's just the good. And then they bit another Cowboys fan. And they bit another Cowboys fan. And they bit another Cowboys fan. And they bit another Cowboys fan, right? And then some of those zombies started getting on radio stations. Then some of those zombies started becoming in-house media. Then some of those zombies started getting on ESPN. And some of those zombies, it started to amount to where we look up. And oh my God, it's a sea of Dak hating zombies. Brain dead, die. Yeah, Dak sucks. Oh, all your comments. Dak sucks. Oh, interception. Oh, Dak sucks. Oh, 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 when the big game, Dak. Brain dead zombies. And what happens is there's so many of them. Additionally, people get bit because they get too close. They get too close to the toxicity, right? And you think about The Walking Dead, man, they had a cast. When there was Carol, there was Maggie, there was Glenn, there was Rick, there was Abraham, Daryl, you know, Michonne, Carl, the list goes on and on. A good people 
just wanting prosperity, wanting to get back to the way things that you think way things used to be before the zombie apocalypse, right? But they came across, right? They came across a guy, and they didn't really know about this guy. He was kind of out in the middle of nowhere. And when they came across, he had a community, which was called the Saviors, right? And this is one of my favorite characters, man. Negan. Now, eventually, Negan was kind of, you know, coined as the villain, the protagonist, you know, like, but Negan really just wanted right for his community. He didn't want nothing. He just wanted, he wanted to protect the saviors, protect his community, wanted them to have abundance of resources and not get bit. So you had a new community kind of come through. All right, y'all can roll with this, but you kind of hurt some of my people so in order to send a message, I got to make an example out of some of your people, too, just to make sure that things are equal. Right. So we know how the story goes with Negan, you know, Glenn and Abraham, you know, saying rest in peace. Right. But Negan was narked as the mad bad guy, the antagonist. Right. But eventually Negan got defeated. Daryl took over the saviors. He was locked up. You know what I'm saying? So eventually Negan got free. And he realized the world was changing. He said, no, what? I don't want to be a part of this. I want to go back in my cell and chill. But during that time, those Dak hating zombies started to mutate. There was the whisperers. So they kind of looked like people and they could communicate and they can do different things. And so the old Dak hating zombies now mutated into Micah Parsons hating zombies. Now, for some of you, who were good people. You really liked Micah Parsons. We were coming into, you were coming into shows last year, commenting, hey man, I think Micah should win the Defensive Player of the Year award. And I think the Lions going crazy. And man, he, oh my gosh, Micah Parsons is unblockable. But what happened? Back in January, he got bit. Someone got bit, right? Someone in house got bit. And that in house person bit somebody else, right? and bit somebody else, and bit somebody else, and bit the radio station, and bit the media, and bit the Dallas Morning News, and bit, 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 bite, 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 feasted on my comment section, feasting. So now it's, oh, Dak sucks, oh, Eric Epstein, oh, Michael Hughes, oh, poor class, oh. A bunch of brain dead zombies walking around. So here I am in my community, like the saviors, whether you're at the hilltop or whether you're at Alexandra, wherever, what we are trying to do is prevent good people from getting bit and becoming brain dead zombies. Now I will look around and I see chats. I'll watch other channels. I'm on different social media platforms and I see good people that I've, I've known since 2020 real good solid people in our community and it's like oh my god they've been bit they are now a toxic brain dead zombie where you can provide all of the evidence you can say tj watt miss otas and christian mccaffrey and 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 demarcus Ware and camp like the list goes on you can provide all the mountains of evidence but they've changed into the brain dead zombie compromise. Like I said, he's not gonna compromise. Oh, compromise. Michael Parsons is Jalen Smith 2.0. Oh, brains. And it's sad to look out, man. It's sad to look out there. And if you look out there right now, there is a sea of brain dead Dak hating Micah hating zombies out there and it's a C y'all and listen we are not strong enough to combat this it's in the airwaves it's on TV it's in the riders zombies everywhere but all I can do is prevent and fight and battle and keep my good people from getting bit so listen be careful of what you digest be careful of who you're getting close to because some of these zombies want your blood. They don't want you to reach prosperity. They don't want you to, to be at Camp Alexander behind the wall and having water and having solar power. Nah, they want you bit. 
They want you a part of the pack. They want you brain dead, not thinking for yourselves. But I'm listening, y'all. Negan is still here with Lucille. And I'm swinging, right? My guy, Boss Cowboy, he's like Rick. You know what I'm saying? We got some curls out there. My guy, you know what I'm saying? Roman DMV, they like Daryl. You know what I'm saying? We out there shooting. You know what I'm saying? We out there still banging. We're going to ride this thing on out. But it's only a slim few of us. There are a bunch of of brain dead zombies now in Cowboys Nation, Cowboys fam, and they are coming for us all. But make sure you're staying on the move. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Keep your head on the swivel and make sure you do not get bit, man. It's your boy J Tuck. Comment, like, subscribe, follow me on all social media platforms at J Tuck 151. Want everyone to say stay blessed and encouraged, but we got a lot of good content. Got a fire, fire interview I'm going to drop today. So you definitely don't want to miss out. And of course, go match. Let's go get it and get the job done, Luca, even though Drake just jinxed my marriage. But it is what it is, man. But I appreciate each and all your support. We're going to keep rocking. We're going to keep moving forward. You got to keep climbing, keep moving. Some of y'all going to have to pick up the pace and move along with this. Or if not, you're going to get bit. But we want you all to survive so we can get to this season and do what we got to do. I want everyone to stay safe, blessed, and encouraged. And don't get big. Peace. Mm -hmm.